Welcome back to Fast Market. I'm Alex Coffee alongside Kevin Hanks. Now time for our cash tag segment. We're going to be showcasing Zoom video. Joining us here in studio, TD Ameritrade Network contributor Jenny Horn and from likefolio.com, the co-founder Andy Swan is with us. Hope you guys had a great weekend. I'm looking forward to this report though, Jenny, because in many ways this is the name of 2020. If you had to Zoom, or I didn't even mean to say Zoom. If you had to, <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah, if you had to choose one name that kind of, you, you look at the stock price performance and try to explain to someone who maybe was hibernating for the entire year why, uh, you know, why things happen the way they did, Zoom video might be the one that you choose. Yes, we even started using it sort of as a noun. You'd say mm -hmm. you we're going to Zoom someone instead of you know all the different multifaceted video conferencing tools you could have used. Zoom was sort of the go-to, and I actually think that might be a little bit of the concern heading into this report. Is just expectations are so high, and so many people are wondering: Is this just a COVID play, or does this company have actually lasting power outside of what has been a successful year? So for this current quarter, which is aftermarket close today, analysts are expecting sales growth of about 50 percent from a year ago. Now, this is a growth rate any other company would be absolutely thrilled with, but because Zoom has such high expectations ahead of this report, many are concerned that this may not be enough, which is sort of ridiculous when you consider a 50% growth rate. But some factors to watch heading into this report are they are expected to see very strong growing demand with, of course, their namesake, their video conferencing tools. But there is that concern that as people go back to school and e-learning is sort of hopefully phases out and people return to offices that this might dwindle in demand. But the company does continue to expand its solutions actually outside of its video conferencing tools. They have now Zoom phone applications, which sort of combines Zoom's platform with <laughs> different hardware features from Yeelink and Poly. They also have Zoom events, which is expected to see significant growth this quarter, which is a platform with sort of all of the capabilities of their virtual experiences, but of course now you can offer all these different features where you can have people pay to enter this large meeting and i think these the right now zoom events seems very cool to me in a time when you know we're, we're sort of uncertain with the rising case counts in covid this seems like a perfect way to say attend a concert or something with a lot of people while doing so safely another thing is zoom operates on this freemium business model which is really great for actually driving new customers. Now, the idea is eventually these customers sign up for the paying model, but right now I think that's a huge way to get people loyal to Zoom and sort of, a, I mentioned, using Zoom as almost a noun right now. But they have a strong balance sheet. They currently have no debts. So there is this expectation they will continue with their M&A sort of path moving forward. And they do have right now a lot of different partnerships with Atlas and ServiceNow, Dropbox. They just acquired Five9. So they are doing a lot of good things to stay ahead, but there is this sort of looming threat of competition, whether it be from these massive behemoths of Cisco, Microsoft, and Google Meet. They are in a highly, highly competitive space that's only growing more intense because I think a lot of these companies so sort of took a page from Zoom's success over the last year. But our first tweet today talks about actually an RBC analyst call ahead of this report, which says Zoom earnings preview, RBC Capital reiterates outperformed price target in $450. The focus will only will be on three key topics, the F59 commentary, expectations on gross margins and sustainability from Zoom's COVID cohort. So again, is this sort of echoes the same sentiment of is this a story of COVID or does this company have lasting power? Now, I believe it does, but there's this obvious slowdown in growth we're seeing, which is actually what our next tweeter today highlighted so perfectly, which says, Zoom growth is starting to slow down. There's been a noticeable drop in new Zoom business accounts detected in the last four months. Zoom is down 15% this month, so expectations could be lower this quarter. Now, I actually think that lower expectations, Andy, are good for this company for this quarter because I think expectations have run up so much. Again, I 50% growth year over year, and I think that this actually could not be good enough for this company. So what are you seeing with your data in Zoom? Because I think there's a lot of expectations ahead of this report. <laughs> Yeah, Jenny, I agree. You know, the lower Zoom could get expectations, probably the better, because coming off of a run like they had uh, last year, it's nearly impossible to maintain. It reminds me a whole lot of the conversation we had last week about Peloton, where this is a, mm -hmm. you know, company that got a lot of pull forward demand. In Zoom's case, uh, you know, absolutely astronomical amounts of pull forward demand. And now the story is can they continue to monetize that? You know, how are the subscribers staying on? And how are they adding new business? And from you know a new business perspective, we do see 
a, a really significant drop, um, you know, 31% down year over year. But uh, the chart we're looking at now is mentions, uh, just people talking about Zoom and being on a Zoom conference call, how much that's fallen off, 70% uh, year over year. This is our most correlated metric to revenue growth. So no, we don't expect revenue to drop 70% year over year, but what this is showing us is that the rate of, of new revenue additions uh, has dropped significantly and uh, does not bode very well uh, for this company because you know when we look at Zoom, we zoom out of Zoom, you know, really what we see is a company that did a phenomenal job of scaling into a once in a lifetime op opportunity, uh, capturing that user base. But now as they move forward, and markets are always forward looking, uh, you know, the concern is definitely, uh, can they maintain those growth rates? Can they maintain that user base that they brought on a year ago? And from our data's perspective, it looks like a pretty tough road ahead. Andy, <clears throat> let's play, a, let's have some fun with this. Pretend I'm Lawrence Olivier and pretend you're Dustin Hoffman and I have a, a dental drill bit in my hands. And I'm asking Andy Swan, is it safe? Is it safe to get back in Zoom stock right here? What is it? You know, because, you know, this company, like Jenny said, is still growing. You know, the, the re revenue expectations, $664 million a year ago, projected to be between $985 and $990 million. This stock has sold off significantly from what everyone thought was a crazy, not realistic valuation. But the question is, has it sold off enough with the still growth that this company is experiencing, and it's reached the level of the verbs for the name, like like Jenny said, it's you know I'm gonna we're, we're you know I'm gonna zoom you or things like that. The question is, has this stock moved down enough where it's safe to start trading it from a bullish perspective, or do you just gotta play for a move? Whatever they come out with, the stock's gonna move big in in one direction or the other, Andy. Yeah, I, I have no problem with trading it for the for the volatility ahead. I do. I, I have serious concerns about the stock long term. Um, you know, we would like to see some stabilization in that in that dropping of uh, in that consistent drop of people talking about either you know establishing a Zoom account, you know, signing up, subscribing to Zoom, buying the Zoom for business or events packages, really dwindling very quickly. And so until that stabilizes, I really can't see. Uh, any reason to get into it. The stock is off for very good reasons. And I think um, the risk from here is that that trend continues. Andy, I'm gonna just make some statements how I see it. And I'm just gonna ask you to agree or disagree or fill in some blanks where I'm missing things here. You're talking about a name that went 10X last year and did absolutely dominate the video conferencing space. So completely tip our hats. I'm not discounting anything they did, which was uh, absolutely incredible. However, it's fairly easy technology to replicate. We saw how quickly the major players turned around technology that looks very comparable. And as much as maybe Kevin, Jenny, I, or yourself may wanna say that we're Zoom conferencing somebody, you know, Fortune uh, 100 company XYZ doesn't really care about that. If they have an existing relationship with Microsoft or Cisco or Alphabet or whatever it may be, that's probably going to trump uh, just because maybe our user experience uh, is perceived to be better on Zoom video. And where I, I love the Peloton comparison, but I see the very distinct difference is Peloton is consumer facing, not necessarily enterprise facing and it has that social network that really does yeah. differentiate itself. What does Zoom have, if anything, that makes this company at $100 billion not completely susceptible to 1.7 trillion or 2.5 trillion, whatever it is, Microsoft? Well, I think on the enterprise side, they are completely susceptible, and I don't see anything changing that um, from a, you know, consumer perspective, I do think Zoom does have pretty good consumer applications and it does have a viral feedback loop to the way that people use the product. I don't see that changing. It's got a good experience. People like using Zoom more than they do Slack according to like Folio data. You know, so there's a lot of positives. And again, you know, I have to reiterate, like this company 
is incredible. What the the fact that they're even growing revenue at all after what happened uh, last year and, and being able to continue it into this year is really incredible. So it's not a knock against Zoom. It's just a knock against the expectation of an unrealistic growth rate continuing into the future. Mm-hmm. Our data says that's not happening. And Alex, I think you're completely right. You know, it, it's a different ball game when you start talking enterprise. And Zoom trying to move from consumer into enterprise, um, you know, very difficult. Microsoft already has established relationships and can out, it, you know, they can price their products for free. Um, Zoom can't, it's, it's a difficult spot for Zoom but they've got a great product and they've had a great run so far. So um, you always have to tip your hat to people that can Mm -hmm. execute as well as they have. And uh, if they continue to execute really well, it's gonna be a great company for a long time. It's just a valuation right now, the growth rate expectations seem a little out of whack. Yeah, and Andy, to sort of go off of that, I actually thought that their sort of target cohort was now these businesses with 10 or less employees. So they're not necessarily targeting these TD Ameritrades, these massive companies. They're targeting more of these small businesses, which I think then gives them a little bit of a niche because it's, it is very easy to use. I know, I know that doesn't necessarily, you know, like you said, matter to a, a giant company, but I do think with these small businesses, say you could be more selective when mm-hmm. you have less employees. But Andy, I have another question about your data because I, it, it makes perfect sense to me why we're seeing the mentions sort of fall off as I think people return to the office. But I have to say that I am pretty much, other than you know everyone's, Alex and I, I'm one of the only people I know that's back in an office full time. And I, you see headlines all the time where companies are, say, g- giving actually wage increases to get employees back. And then you see people that will refuse to work back in an office full time. So is that giving Zoom sort of lasting power? Because I know many people who have said, I'll never return to an office. Yeah, you know, I think it is. It's it's definitely giving video conferencing in general lasting power. But I think that the the phenomenon that you're talking about with you know 90 to 95 percent of a workforce being remote is pretty isolated to really large companies. You know, when you're small companies are operating very differently than large companies. Uh, you know, companies in rural areas are operating very differently from those in urban areas. And I think. Um, you know, for Zoom's target cohort, that small business, they're actually more likely to be back into the office already. Uh, you know, school children are more likely to be back in school, which is one of Zoom's, uh, you know, really big uh, catalysts last year. So, um, you know, it kind of it kind of works against them in the same way that these large companies are going to lean on Teams. Uh, they're less likely to be in the office. The small companies that were leaning on Zoom just to get by are more likely to be bringing folks back in. Which to me, Andy, sounds like a, a trend that's not favorable. But I want to I want to wrap here and get kind of a final thought for you because I'm looking at a stock that's roughly up 400 percent from the beginning of 2020. So still incredible performance. But as I think everyone's pointed out, this isn't a story now of how can they, uh, you know, justify their position in the market. This is a stock that's priced for and you know basically growth into perpetuity. With trends no longer favorable, Andy, at a hundred billion dollar valuation, they're going to have to find other revenue streams. Like I, I just don't see how just video conferencing is going to be enough, even if they do dominate one niche part of the market. And so, in a way, at a hundred billion dollars, they've priced themselves out of a takeover more than likely. Are they almost going to be a victim of their own success unless they can pivot this, build on their brand, and execute very well into something else? Yeah, that's what, you know that's what's tough about it. The good news is they have an application and an email address for you know millions and millions of people. So they have the distribution they need for that next great idea. Mm-hmm. I'm not convinced that it's this events idea. You know, it sounds kind of desperate to me. It sounds like something that you're just patching you know your existing technology in a different way because of um, you know market forces that may not last very long. But the the one thing that they do have, they have a team that knows how to execute. They have technology that scales really, really well, and they have a really large uh, network of distribution that they can go to when they have new revenue generating products or ideas. So that those are all very favorable. It's just these macro trends that they're facing, and the expectations that investors have put on the company uh, may just be too much to handle right now. Well said, Andy Swan, co-founder of likefolio.com. We're anxiously awaiting this report. Uh, Data a little bit sour, but expectations have soured as well. So we'll see uh, what happens here. Thanks as always for joining us. Kev, 